you have having flash, Wolf Adventure you're having flash, you're able to play with the counter magic available and syncopate and dissipate, which Jeff does have here. And if something does slide through the cracks, is it charm? Searing Spear can, can take care of it. So it's an interesting deck. It's a deck I've given a spin online. Not a bad deck either. And he is 6 0 with it. So his baby doing well. And on the other side, we see Michael Nyberg playing red green acro. Fairly significant departure in this list is all the copies of Hellrider have been moved to the sideboard. Oh, you see Stringer with Geist in there over it. Yeah. Okay. You see a Searing Spear take care of that Arvelf, and Jeff's going to just pass the turn back. Again, this looks like uh, Michael has moved towards the, again, Ross Merriam School of Magic with your Domries, with your Bonfires. Actually, he has Mortars over Bonfire. Okay. Yep. And he's got Thunder Maws and Silver Hearts. Poor Hunt Master the Fells. Not good enough anymore. I, seem, I feel like with Silver Heart moved in and uh, no Bonfires, maybe he's trying to have a little bit more game against control decks, generally speaking. So you're going to see a Gyre Sage here from Michael, which Jeff's going to draw an Izzy Charm for the turn. You see a Mortars in his hand. There's a Sulfur Falls. I think he's going to pass the turn back. So we'll see how explosive of a turn Michael can have here. I mean, he certainly has, for example, Burning Tree Emissary into Domri Rad is, a, is an option. He has Slurhoof Four in his hand as well right now, so... Definitely looks like he's got a pretty good hand. Yeah. He might be able to play all those spells in one turn, right? Here is your uh, here's your Burning Tree Emissary, so that's going to evolve the Gyro Sage as long as he doesn't forget. He's going to die over there, Michael. Please he's going to die, Michael. Okay, there we go. So we're going to Izzy Charm the, the Sage with yep. the Evolve Trigger on. Still got some mana floating. I have a, a difficult time turning down landing Domri Rad here. And that's where we're going to go. Yeah. Planeswalker in. And we're going to take it up. Let's take a look at what we can see here off the top. We'll get a white die out there for you guys at home. Let you know that it is up to four counters. Reveal. Thunderball Hellcat to the grid. Not grip. bad. Not a bad one. <laughs> not, not bad at all. <laughs> As Michael's going to pass the turn back. If Thunderball Hellcat draws a not bad for you, I'm trying to figure out what's good. For <laughs> um, Bogomos. Oh, uh, okay. Good. That's what will keep you happy? Good. Gotcha. That one's powerful. Jeff's going to play a Steve Vents and just pass the turn back. See, so he has a, a Syncopate over there, a Mizium Mortars, a Think Twice. Uh, would you be happy with Avalanche Rider? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, okay, that gets, gets the blood going? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. You see Michael's hand over that Thunderbolt Hellkite. Does have a Stomping Ground in his hand. Wolf or Silver Art and a Flint of Four. Looks like the turn's not going to begin with Thomry taking up just yet. Maybe Michael knows what he's up against. Has seen, Je have seen Jeff's deck before. They're going to see a Flint of Four start off the turn here for Michael. Well, it looks like that's going to be good to go. I think we have, if we have a Avenger in our hand, then we almost certainly let the boar come in. Yeah. Michael very hesitant here. With good reason, I think, because we're going to see Dombri scooch on up. Yep. What she got? Not a land. Looks like a mountain to me. Yep. Just going to pass the turn back. Wolf Avenger. So it's pretty clear he knows what he's up against. Yes. A lot of people walk into that trick when playing against Jeff. Although well, it still doesn't answer the question of why he wouldn't have uh, turned on his... Oh, he doesn't... He has a stomach ground, right? Yeah. You surprised he didn't turn on the board and try to get in yeah, there? Yeah, there's really no reason not to. Sure. Now Jeff is going to go after Domri now with the 3-3 Wolfare Avenger. Regeneration says that this stack is perfectly safe. The question is, is Michael comfortable with that moving down to two counters? I can't imagine blocking here seems getting way ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, just let that let that go. Well, Jeff's hand of syncopate, think twice, and Mizium Mortars. We'll see if he's going to make a move on his main face here, if he's just comfortable with how things are currently looking, wants to leave syncopate up, maybe leave think twice up as well, get a little deeper into his deck, or if he wants to pull the trigger on a Mortars to kill the boar, which he does want to do. Let's pass the turn back. Yeah, I guess the plan here is to syncopate anything large enough that can block the, block the Avenger. Yeah. And otherwise, just keep attacking Dolmery. Yep. So the mountain is drawn there for Michael. So he can't cast either one of these five mana spells, Wolfer, Silverheart, or Thunderwall Hellkite. 
I think he's got this idea that it's probably going to run into a counter spell. So which one do I want to have get countered here? Which one's more important in this matchup, the Silverheart or the Thunderball? Probably more inclined to let my Silverheart get countered when Avengers on the in, in play. Okay, there's a Thunderball to lead with, and Syncopate for one's going to exile that from the game. Now the tough part is, yeah, do I want to let Emissary come in? Because remember, he's not activated that Domri yet. So I think his turn probably should have began by activating Domri to see, you know, maybe if it influences his turn or not. And the Gorkline Rampager would have probably influenced his decisions. Yeah. So just a little bit of poor sequencing there by Michael. If you're going to activate that, if you're going to activate Domri, you want to start your turn off with activating that and work with good information. And assuming that we were trying to play around a counter spell with that sequence, I believe that we should have led with the with the silver heart because Jeff at any time can just go back on defense with a regenerator. Yeah. The flyer is just more important in general. As Jeff does finish off the Domery, draws a syncopate first turn, so syncopate think, think twice of the cards in his hand. Michael over there with the Wolfer Silver with a Gorklane Rampager and a stomping ground to go along with a Rootbound Crag. So it's gonna start with an attack here for two from the Emissary. Jeff at the ready to counter any annoying spell. It's going to be a Gore Clan Rampager. Let's see if he's going to fight over this. He is. Syncopate yep. for three is going to counter that. That's how the Rampager from the game. Now, Wolf here, Wolf here Avenger trying to hold the fort down. The Jeff does draw a land. He's going to start his turn off with a think twice. That is going to be one card at a time. There we go. What is that draw? He has a land. Alright, so in for three. Does just pass the turn back. So now Michael, we'll see if he uh, we'll see if he pulls the trigger. Because he does draw a Thunderbolt Hellkite. So another, he's gonna he's casting one. Yeah, he's casting one of these things. Right now, if you're if you're Michael. Your, your concern is probably Snapcaster Mage on something, but you know that he has the two Syncopates down there, so there's nothing that he can actually counter because you can afford to pay the one. Yeah, it's, it's Syncopate on is it charm to kill the event, to kill the Emissary were he to try to pair, I guess is the most reasonable thing to be concerned about. So here comes Wolfer Silverheart. The big bad wolf is going to bond up with the Emissary. It's going to make that a 6-6. Six, six. Silverheart standing tall as an 8-8. Eight, eight. Michael's going to play at something around and pass the turn back, so... This is the this is the, the tough situation here for Jeff Stack because now he's got to switch to a defensive role. Wolf Adventure has to just slow way down. He's going to play Hinterland Harbor and pass the turn back. And especially since so many of Jeff's defensive measures are damage based, mm -hmm. Silverheart's especially devastating. And so now we do see an Arbor Elf drawn there for Michael along with the Thundermont Hellkite that he drew from the previous turn. You see him tapping five mana relatively quickly here. All systems go. Here comes Mr. Mr. Thundermaw. Let's get all those yep. guys in there as well. Okay. And yep, that is it. Those guys are too big. I can't even overload mortars to take care of those things. No, none, of, Jeff. none of them. None no. of them die. No. So, Jeff Hoogle going to be down a game here. Michael Nyberg up a game with Green Red Aggro over Rug Flash. Take a look at Jeff's sideboard here. Again, damage based spells, not really the soup of the day when you're playing a Thunderbolt Hellkite and Wolfare Avenger. Makes yes. it very difficult to win. So, we'll see if he needs anything to fix that. You see a sideboard of two Pillar Flame, two Light Trickery, two Is It Static Caster, a Ground Seal. Two Counterflux, four Clones, and a Curse of Echoes. Two Counterflux is certainly a good place to start. I guess the, the interesting card here is Clone, and I how like good they can be. Michael's got a bunch of awesome dudes. You got good. some clones. It's like, if it's not in here for this kind of matchup, I don't know what you're doing with it. Yeah, I think, you know, ideally Clone is for your Angel Serenities. We've seen that be the trump in those matchups, but it's certainly difficult to be able to kill a Wolf or a Silverheart and kill a Thermal Hellkite from Jeff's deck, so how about not one of your own? Sure. I think that's a reasonable plan, actually. And on the other side here, we have two copies of Zealous Conscripts. They seem very reasonable here. Yank. His four copies of Hellrider, probably not at their best against a deck with uh, Wolfier Avenger and potentially other things in that space. So he still might want to leave that one on the bench. He has another Thunder Maw he can bring in, and the rest of his sideboard is pretty much non-starters. So. Take a look at Michael's main deck. What do you think you sideboard out for those conscripts and, and probably the Hellkite as well? As I agree with you, the Hellrider probably shouldn't come in. Do you really like Mortars in this matchup? It seems kind of meh. 
I would probably want to get rid of Flint Hoof Boar because it is the creature that lines up the most poorly with Wolfier Avenger. Okay. That's probably what my instinct would be. So you like having mortars in? I mean, yeah, I think, I mean, there's got to be an expectation that there's going to be just more more creatures in deck than just Avenger, right? There's, sure. You know, it's not like he just has four random Avengers in his otherwise creatureless deck. Reasonable to anticipate something like Hell Master of the Fells or whatever. You okay. play these red green lands. So, I, they were not, based on the cards that we saw in the first game, it, obviously there's not a ton of targets that we see, but I think that I'd probably rather get rid of the boar first, particularly on the draw. Okay. All right, well, we'll see how both players do off the sideboard here, as they are already done doing that. You see the old shuffle up I guess, for both yep. players, as we do want to thank you guys at home for watching. We're over 6,000 viewers right now. Send some tweets out. Call some friends. Dial the rotary phone if you still got one of those. We're also two for two so far on players in the feature match wearing scarves, playing Snapcaster Mage. So that is a tell. I mean, I've, I could have, it's not, it's not a tell in so far as I could have actually just told you that based on the way that people who wear scarves indoors generally are. But now you know this for your tournaments going forward. So the guy who's playing Scarf probably has a Hallet Bound in his deck. Pretty safe bet. So do you work for ESPN Stats and Info? Do you just no, have but I could. Just useless, useless sources of information? That's actually useful. Oh, is that? In contrast to ESPN Stats and Information, <laughs> what I gave you is actually practical and useful. Okay. Good to know. And based on real analytics, also, in contrast <laughs> to ESPN Stats and Info. Good to know. Good to know. Appreciate that. So, Humans are predictable creatures. Yes. It's just the way the world works. So we do appreciate over 6,000 of you guys tuning in. It was very nice of you. Again, feel free to interact with us at SCG Live, hashtag SCGMKE for your tweets. I got my computer up over here. I've got my phone. Patrick doesn't believe in Twitter. So I'll take care of his tweets for you guys as well. The people want you on Twitter. I know. I want you to know that. Are you holding out just because the people want you on there? I, I would be lying if, it said that, if I said that wasn't influencing me at okay. all. Okay. All right. I appreciate the truth in the booth. Yeah. So we're going to see a stopping ground here from Jeff, and he's going to pass the turn back. Stopping ground on tap for Michael. I think we're going to see an Arbor Elf to start the show. And we are. Awesome start. Threatens a lot of very good turn two plays. And also importantly for the Red Green Aggro deck, whose mana is not best at times, means he has both colors of mana. And as this game does progress, a quick update for you guys at home, for those of you who do care about some of the faces in the crowd. Matt Hoey, Sam Black, Rob Vaca, and two more are currently at 6-0. Joe Bernal, who is very good at somehow getting draws in tournaments, he's X-0-1. And we're going to see a foot here, four here for Michael Nyberg. Okay, so we, we, we left in some boars. Untap this here, stopping ground. Vroom. Dead. Bacon. Not a horrible trade for Michael. No, I think he's happy. That's okay. I think, I think both sides are happy. We yeah. can move along here. Michael going to take a draw step. Let's see if he's able to push some more of these big threats out here. Maybe a core clan rampager if he has one. You see a Domri raid in his hand. Ooh, that's a singleton gruel guild gate. This is a man who is concerned about his mana. I like it. Mm. You want to tap this? Here's Domri. Yeah, there's, there's a syncopate. syncopate. All right, so Jeff trading one for one a bunch here. There's a Hinderland Harbor and pass the turn back. So let's see if he has a Yeva or a Wolfer Avenger here. Michael going to draw a card. Another Mortars. Not great. Yeah, this was my concern is that his Mortars targets, while they do exist, it's just kind of mad. I feel like he can get clogged up a little bit here, can get his creatures eaten by flash things. So like, is Michael going to attack here with this Arbor Elf? Is he going to trade that? All right, so Jeff's happy to take one. No fear of Yeva this That's a gutsy attack with a bunch of uh, zealous conscripts and... And Thundermaws in the, in, the, in the hand, rather. So Jeff has no flash guy here. As he does try to match the Fells for the turn. So that is a good Mortar's target. The scary thing here for Jeff is he's got to put his shields down to cast that Huntmaster. And if he puts the shields down, a Wolf or Silverheart could come in. Yeah. That card could win a game all by itself against this deck. So there might have been a very strong yeah. argument for Jeff last turn to have used a Searing Spear on one of Michael's Arbor Elves. Slow, slow down, slow down its production a little bit. Well, you have to tap out at some point. Yeah. And is he really going to produce a better steering spear target than those Arbor Elves? I mean, he's been missing land drops. You see another Mizzium Mortars drawn there for Michael to go along with a Thunderball Hellkite and a. Is that a, that's a Conscript? It's not a Domri. So and five a lot red cards. Of, a lot of Mortars. Yeah, all those Mortars. So let's see if Nightbird's going to go for the Thunderball. Hope for the best. 
if he's just going to attack with the r rails, what does he want to do this Let's turn? See. It's like walking into your home and the lights are off. Yep. Anything could be in there. <laughs> Scary. Scary. Maybe that's just how things are at my house. I don't know. So, yep, we're going to tap stomping ground a bunch of times. We're going to make five so, minute in the total here and try to go for a Thunder Mile fight. Snapcaster made some debate, says. I don't think mm. so. All right, so Jeff makes a good turn there for Jeff. Yeah. You see a Huntmaster, is it charm over there? Snapcaster going to come on in for two. Searing Spear in Jeff's hand as well. He just needs to make sure that one of those big threats is not resolved. I would, no I, would just, I would go after his mana creatures big time right here. Yeah. I see mana getting tapped. There's a hunt master of the fells. He's got an Izzet Charm and a Searing Spear, and I would happily get one of those mana creatures out of there. I don't think that Searing Spear is getting any better, particularly now with Huntmaster in play. You're covering most of the things you'd be worried about with the Searing Spear. All right, so it looks like we are in agreement. Is he going to use a Charm or a Spear to do this? That's the question. Right, he's going to use a Charm to take care of that guy. Pass the turn back, so... No, uh, no overloaded mortars. If Michael were to draw a land, which he would have done, I guess he could have just isn't charmed that. To be fair, but you do see those three copies of Missy mortars, and Michael is more than happy to cast to get out of his hand. So we're gonna start here with one. Take care of that Huntmaster of the Fells. That thing's gotta go. Says Nyberg. See if he wants to cast another mortars here. None of the other, none of the other targets are all that great for mortars right now. And Michael's got some light to play with. There's no rush. Might get a little bit better. You see, he's thumbing. He's thinking maybe I mortars that wolf token, get in for one, start trading two for one damage. I kind of agree with you. There's, this is going to take care of Snapcaster Mage. There's really much of rush, as you said. He's at 16 life. It's just going to draw a card here. And while the mortars, I, I personally feel, aren't great in this matchup, I don't think they're worth trading a Snapcaster Mage with. I think we can do a lot better with that. He's going to come across for two here. Serious Spear going to take care of the Arbor Elf. Jeff just with the land in his hand. Says, says go ahead. So, it was a big draw. Yeah, Gorkland Rampage is one hell of a draw. And that's going to resolve. So Nyberg with a 4-4 Trampler in play. Jeff going to draw a card. Mortars is going to take care of that. So we're playing a little top deck magic. Yep. How the game was meant to be played, my friends. In comes the Wolf Token. Let's see what Nyberg can do. It's a Strangle Root, guys. Totally fine draw. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. The goose is loose. In for two we go. That's not to cast the mortars on that wolf token. Jeff draws a card. He's going to get in for two yet again, so they're trading back and forth here. Neither one of these players ready to slow down. Is Nyberg going to draw a card? Looks like he draws another Gore Clan Rampager. Stranger Root Geist has come across again. Here's your Gore Clan Rampager. Is that going to resolve? Counterflux says, I don't think so. Pass it back. You know what card I would consider adding somewhere in Jeff 75? I would consider adding Thrag Tusk. I would consider adding Thrag Tusk. You like Thrag Tusk? I think it could have a home in this deck. It's a powerful card. He read his article on Star City when it was on the free side. He said that this is a deck that does not need Thrag Tusk to win. He says he understands why it would be good in the deck, but he said it, it, through his through his testing and his battles, two, two Star City Games top 16s, he has not ever once regretted not having Thrag Tusk. So. Well, if he had a Thrag Tusk in here, the game would end on the spot. So. Oh, perhaps. Well, that's good to know, results oriented man. I'm saying. Appreciate that. Well, it's not like, wow, this is a really narrow situation when the one where Thrag Tusk would be good. Well, I mean, it's not like, I, I, I'm going to give Jeff a little credit and think that he knows that Thrag Tusk oh, exists. Because sure. you're going to see Missy and Mortars clear up the, clear up the gang here. Sure. I don't think he lost a bet and isn't allowed to play with Thrag Tusk. I think he's choosing not to. All right, so I think we're just going to have an Emissary here. Yeah. Just a 2-2 two -two for 2. Pass the turn back. It's just going to draw a card. A couple of lands now. What's this draw going to be? It's going to be a Think Twice. Hit one. Not a Thrag Tusk. Sulfur Falls, pass the turn back. Michael draws a card. Another Zealous Conscripts. Here comes Burning Tramissary. Flashback think twice here for Hoogland. See what he finds. Is, 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 looks like, actually five looks like it's a lot of lands now. Pass the turn back. Draw here. 
Thunder Ball. Thunder Ball held tight. In for two. And, and now, Jeff's a, Michael's in the spot where lands and spells are both pretty excellent draws. Yep. And Jeff drawing a lot of lands here. Michael draws a Stranger Root Geist. And as you said, yeah, all lands and all spells are good now. Enviable position for Nyberg. This is going to cast a Stranger Root Geist. In with the Goose. In with the Emissary. Jeff draws a card. Searing Spear. Plays a land. Passes the turn back. Nyberg. There's a mountain. Finally something to do. Thundermall Hellkite, what do you say? That's game for you, Mr. Oogle. Michael Nyberg, two games to zero. Quick beats. Green, red aggro defeating Rug Flash. Without, sure. th without Thrag Tusk. I understand, well, I understand in theory not having Thrag Tusk, but this deck's actually going to, it seems to me like it's going to struggle to actually shut the door. You know what I mean? Well, that was the problem that I did find when I was testing this deck online. I wanted this deck to be good because it's unique, it's fun, it's got some cool cards. But I had what actually just happened to Jeff happen to me quite a bit. Where you do trade one for one a bunch, and you try to get ahead or try to close the game out, and you need a Huntmaster or you have to do that, and there's no guarantee that you actually draw those cards because you don't actually have a great way to go about drawing cards in the deck. And then what happens when your opponent just has a 5-5 five -five on defense? Yeah. How does this deck break through that? It's two cards, basically. Yeah. You know, so. It's difficult for it to do. So not having it in the main deck because you have this particular way you want to go about your game ones, that's fine. Not having it in the sideboard to me is seems uh, not not a choice I would make. Sure, sure. If you're of the Paul Wrightson school of thought where you should either be playing Burning Tree Emissary or Thrag Tusk, those are the two choices you're allowed to make. Jeff is breaking that rule. Um, and I can definitely see an argument here for Thrag Tusk, but as I said, Jeff, a player who we have done a deck tech on, a player who did write an article on 